then we have the topic solving special systems. And in the theory, we have this part. When two lines intersect at a point, there is exactly one solution to the system. A system with at least one solution is a consistent system, okay? At least one solution. Remember that we can have more than one solution. When the two lines in a system do not intersect, they are parallel lines, okay? They are not going to cross at any points. There are no ordered pairs that satisfy both equations, so there is no solution. Parallel lines, you, will, uh, you already know that they are not going to intersect in any point. And what is the solution for a system of equations when we graph? The point where uh, both graph intercepts. And in this case, if they don't intercept, there is no solution. The other part is when a system that has no solution, we can say that this is an inconsistent system. So we can divide the system into consistent system and the inconsistent system, okay? In the example one, we have systems with no solution. In the system of equations we have is this one. Show that y is equal x minus one, and the other one is negative x plus y equal two. How do they know in the book that this doesn't have a solution? We have three methods to investigate about this. We can compare the slopes in y intercept. For example, for the first one, what is the slope? The number that is with the x is one, right? And in here, what is the number? Remember that to compare the slope, we need to write the equation in the form of the equation. Y, the variable Y equal X, M, X plus B. In this case, M is with the X. When you pass it to the other side, it's going to be positive. So they have the same slope. They have the same slope, but you can see that the y-intercept is different. In the first one, the, uh, the y-intercept is one, negative one, and for the other one, the y-intercept is two. So they start in different points, but they have the same slope. The lines are parallel because they, ha they have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So when you graph, using the method two, the graph system, you are going to have something like this. Look the second equation, start in two, starts in two in here, and is separated to the other one because the other one starts in negative one for y. The y-intercept is negative one. They are not going to touch at any point. They are not going to have a solution because they don't have something in common. They don't have anything, okay? The graphs are not going to touch at any point. So in the method two, when we graph, we can say that the lines are parallel. How we graph this, guys, again, using the intercepts, right? Y intercept and the X intercept. I assign zero to the value of the other variable and we graph. If the Y intercept or the X intercept, you cannot find it. I think that one classmate uh, asked to me about one exercise that, uh, oops, something like that, you can use another bar, uh, values. For example, you can assign one for X and see what value you obtain for Y. You can uh, use another value like two for X and see what value you have for the other variable. Remember, I told you that with zero, what's, uh, what's easier? In the most of the cases, we can obtain the intercept. If we obtain zero, zero is because it passes from the origin, through the origin but you can obtain another numbers using other values for the variables. Remember how we graph in the second partial. We use a table starting with X in one, two, three, for example, I keep random values and we see how, uh, what value we obtain for the other variable, Y in this case. So again, with the method two, we can see that this is not going to have any solution because they are parallel lines. And the method three is to solve the system. In this case, you can solve the system using 
any of the methods we start previously in the class. Graph method, the substitution, or you can use the elimination. You have three methods to solve this system of equations. In this case, they use substitution. You can see that if you substitute, you have negative x, this is for the first equation, negative x plus y, but y in this case is isolated. Isolated that y is equal to x minus one. So we replace on the variable. Remember, we only replace in the variable, okay? In this y, I'm going to insert this because y is equal to this. This is the idea of substitution. You are going to replace in one equation the value you obtain for the other one, okay? We combine both equations to find only one result. So in this case, x minus one, and this is equal to. So we substitute and we say that this statement we find is false. If you subtract negative x plus x, x is, is a, x converts to zero, okay? X eliminates, and you have negative one equal to when you eliminate the variable. And it's going to be possible that negative one could be neg uh, could be equal to no, right? That's never going to be true. So if this statement is false, the system has no solution. So we prove the three methods, and we can say using the three methods that this doesn't have any kind of solution. So, uh, guys, the more complicated things you already pass it that it's to learn the methods, okay? To learn to graph, to learn to substitute, and to learn to uh, use the elimination. This topic that, that we are studying today is only analyzing what happened with the system of equations, when they have a solution, when they don't have any, okay? That's the idea of this, only to understand what's happening on the graph of the systems or what is going to pass with the equations we have in the system, okay? This is the idea of this. But the methods, how to solve it, the most difficult part, you already learned it, so, uh, okay. In the example two, we have systems with infinitely many solutions. Show that y is equal to x plus one, and the other equation is two x minus y plus one equals zero. This has to have infinitely many solutions, and how do I know this? Again, we can compare the slopes, the method one, compare the slopes and the y-intercept. Remember, to compare the slopes, I need to write the equation in the form y equal mx plus b. Is the slope multiplicated by the variable x plus the y-intercept, the y-intercept b, okay? So the method one, when we compare this and we obtain the value for the y variable, y is equal to x plus one in the first one. And in the other one, y is equal to x positive n plus one again. They are completely exact. They are completely exact. What is going to happen when you graph this and you graph this again? It's going to be completely on the top. It's going to be completely on the other graph. The graph is going to be one and the other one completely on, okay? It's the same graph, it's the same graph. So all the points of this graph are going to be together. They are going to intercept in, in infinitely many points. How can you know in what points they are going to intercept, okay? It's impossible to know in this case you have many solutions because they are touching in all the points. One is completely on the top of the, of the other one. So. We write both equations in the slope intercept form and the lines have the same slope and the same y intercept. You can see again that it's the same graph completely, so you are going to have the same uh, infinitely many solutions. If the system were graphed, the graph would be the same line. There are infinitely many solutions. The method to, that we can use is solve this algebraically. We can use again any method you can have, we can use elimination, we can use substitution. In this case, it's easier. We have the same, so if we use elimination, 
we only change the sign. Remember that we can change the sign of one of the equations if we need it. To convert this in the opposite of the other one. And if we have negative y, negative 2x, negative 1, when we subtract all of this, we obtain 0. 0 equals 0. You can see that both sides of the equation, OK? They are complete. 1 minus 1 is 0. And when you subtract the variables, you obtain 0 too. So we can say that this is true. This equation is always going to be true. 0 is always going to be equal 0, right? So we can say that they are infinitely many solutions. So when they are completely equal, this is important in here, when they are completely equal, they are infinitely many solutions. OK. Uh, most theoretical part, consistent systems can either be, um, be independent or dependent. An independent system has exactly one solution, just one solution, the independent system. The graph of an independent system uh, consists in two intersecting lines. This is the typical example where, where we graph that we have the two lines and they only intercept in one point, okay? So this solution is going to be that point when both, uh, both equations intercept. And the other case is a dependent system. A dependent system has infinitely many solutions. The graph of a dependent system consists on of two coincident lines. This classification I consider it's important because you understand the figures when uh, with the theory, classification of systems of linear equations. The classification according to the number of solutions. For example, when it's a consistent and independent graph, we only have one solution. When it's consistent and dependent, remember the dependent has more than one, so we can have infinitely many solutions. Inconsistent system, remember, is the only one that has any solution. They don't have any solution in the inconsistent system. The description, for example, consistent and independent, they have different slopes. Consistent and dependent, remember the dependent is because they have more than one. So we can say that they have the same slope, but uh, the same y intercept too. So this is the graph that I wanted to show you. When we have infinitely many solutions, it's because both graphs are equal. So in here, we can have two lines, and we don't notice because they are completely equal. So they are going to touch in all the points. They touch in all the points, so the solutions, again, are infinite. Because how can I know a, an approximate number for this solution? I cannot know, OK? I can take any point, and it could be a solution. I can take, for example, this point and see what value we have for x and for y, and it could be a solution. The same in here, it could, this could be a solution, or this point that is touching the axis, okay? For the inconsist, the inconsistent is because we have parallel lines. In this, we already, we already saw it, is this one, okay? This is inconsistent. They are not going to touch at any point, they are parallel lines. And this is the, I didn't show you this because it's what we already know, is the most common type of uh, system of equations that when we graph both lines intercept, then we take the point of the interception, like the solution, we only need to try. Remember, when we have a possible solution, we prove it on the equations. That is important. We prove it to know if it's a equation for a, a solution for the system of equations or not. Okay, and the same in the example three and four, we have exactly the same. The number three is to classify each system. So you try to solve it and you can see, for example, in the A, that you obtain the same solution, y equal this, and this is the same. So how many solutions I have? Infinitely many solutions because they are completely equal. 
So you can practice this. You try to solve it, and when you find something like this, okay, infinitely many solutions. It's consistent because it has a solution, and it's dependent because it has more than one solution. B, we have the system of equations. We try to solve it. We multiply the two by all the numbers inside the parentheses. We can say that the slopes are different and the y-intercept, they are different. Remember, we can compare the slope and the y-intercept to know, this is one method, to know if they have many solutions or only one, or they don't have. So the lines have different slopes. If they have different slope and different y-intercept, it means that they are going to intercept in one point, okay? So the system is consistent and independent. It only has one solution, okay? So the slope are different, we have one solution. In the other case, if the system is uh, with the same slope, but different y-intercept, then they are going to be parallel lines, so there's any solution. If they are completely equal, we can have infinitely many solutions. And if they are completely different, we have only one. So this is the only three things that you need to memorize. when you have one solution, many solutions, or any one. You don't have any solution at all. So the maybe to explain you the last one, the last one looks more interesting. The sales manager at Comic uh, now is comparing the sales with the sales of its competitor, Dynamo Comics. If the sales patterns continue, will the sales for comics now ever equal the sales for Dynamo? Explain. Uh, we have this data from this year's 2005, 6, 7, 8. Comics now is one store and Dynamo Comics is the other one. They write all the values for each year. So we use the table to write a system of linear equations and let Y represent the sales total and X represent the number of years uh, since 2005. Sales total, remember the total the most of the times you, uh, we use y to represent the total. This is equal. Increase in sales per year. What is going to be this, guys? The m, the slope, and how we obtain the slope. Remember, dividing the values, the difference in the values of y by the difference of values in x. So you can obtain it only looking at the difference, for example. What is the difference from eight, uh, 180 and 220? 40, right? Between 220 and 260, 20. 260 and 320, 130 and 170, 20, okay? 40, sorry, I'm, I'm saying 20, 40, okay? So you can see that the difference is the same, okay? The slope is the same. Since this moment you see the slope is the same, what is going to happen with this? It's going to be a parallel line. This is going to be a parallel line with the other one. The beginning sales, this is the y-intercept. So you have the same slope, 40, multiplied by the variable x, you can see. But you have different y-intercept. You have this, you have parallel lines, like in the first one, you have parallel lines. So what is going to happen with this? The system has no solution. They are not going to be equal, never. So these two stores, in conclusion, these two stores are never going to happen, and are never going to have the same number of uh, sales. So one is going to be on the top always, okay? The graph of the two equations are parallel lines, so there is no solution. If the patterns continue, sales for the two companies will never be equal, okay? So the company that is on the top is going to continue on the top and the other one is going to continue down, okay? It's going to continue at the bottom of the sales. So this is to interpret the solution and how to use it when we have a system of equations like this, okay? I, I hope, I really hope that the exercise is clear, guys. I take more time than I was planning to do. 
then I'm, I think that I'm going to stop sharing the screen and we can finish the class. I, I'm sorry because I already take you more time, okay? So we can finish in here, guys.